This is our arcade cabinet. It is entirely built by myself, Lachlan, and a few random sort of pitched in a bit of effort every now and then just for Hold. a bit of fun. But, so as we can see, it is made out of some lovely panels of MDF cut out in our school's workshop and spray painted black to give it that cool effect that's a lot nicer than just stock standard MDF brown. Wood. brown. The way this thing works is, what well, was rather simple. It is a small computer, in this case a Raspberry Pi, which you can just see down here. Little low powered computer about the size of a credit card, or a bit thicker obviously. A bit bigger. Yeah, a bit bigger, but you know, roughly. Hooked up to this screen here, which is an old computer monitor that we've just sort of salvaged from the school. Um, it is hooked up to the Raspberry Pi through a HDMI to VGA connector. Uh, the reason being for this is the Raspberry Pi does not have a VGA port, so we couldn't just plug it in straight away. And the added bonus of going through this adapter is that it actually lessens the load on the Pi itself, allowing it to run MAME at a higher frame rate. And I'll get to what MAME is in a bit. But we've got the Raspberry Pi here, Maybe and then, yeah, like a little bread. So I've got the Raspberry Pi hidden behind all these amazing wires here. I know, I know any electrician, any programmer, anyone who's ever worked with electronics is probably crying at the moment, but nevertheless, it's still a work in progress. These buttons here are from an Australian business. We ordered them quite a while ago and they are lovely. Four months, I think. Yeah, four months or so. They're lovely little buttons that have a small little micro switch which simply just connects these, connects the circuit whenever this little black thing is pressed, making a lovely, satisfying click which I have relentlessly been going on about. The satisfying click is very satisfying. And that allows us to then press this but we've got a joystick wired very, very similarly. In fact, it is basically exactly the same. And we take these signals and we were pumping them through this little circuit board that I designed. And with the help from a friend over in South Africa who I met because he makes software that works with this. So yeah, there we go. Making friends and doing work. Okay. So what this would do is it would convert the, just these stock standard button presses into a signal that could be sent to the Raspberry Pi through I2C interface on the GPIO and the general purpose input output pins. And that was working really well up until about 40 minutes ago when I accidentally wired it incorrectly and sort of fried both the chips. Anyway, new parts are being ordered so we'll be able to test that and unfortunately because of that we can't actually show the joysticks or buttons doing anything but I promise they were working a while ago. But anyway, what we had set up was a system where it would start a program called PyKeyed, PyKeyD Pikeed for sure. Um, this program would listen to these microchips and it would convert the signals that these chips would be sending to stock standard key presses. So moving the joystick up would press the up arrow on a virtual fake keyboard. Pressing this would press control, that would press five, and that would press the one key. And those are the stock standard keys that MAME, Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator, uses to control each of its games. What MAME allows you to do is give it a ROM file, which is generally a zip file, and inside that zip file it contains binaries that MAME, the program, will run, and basically, long story short, it allows you to run a lot of old arcade games, for instance, you know, uh, Pac-Man, Frogger, oh, yeah. Galaga, Gyrus, Street Fighter, things like that. And 
a few months ago when we first started this, we were it was running okay. We were using a version of MAME called Advanced MAME, ADV MAME, and it was going all right, but it didn't work very well. It was a bit slow in the frame rate and dropped yeah. a lot. The frame rate was dropping quite a bit and audio was very patchy and it just, it did not sound good at all. But now that we're using this different version of MAME, which has only recently been released out to the world in the last few weeks or so, called MAME for All. And MAME for All was generally for Android and iOS phones, but because the Raspberry Pi is powered by a very similar processor to that of an Android phone, it was incredibly easy to port it. Not by not done by me or Lachlan or anyone else here. It was done by a chap that just decided, hey, I think people would like this. Let's get it on the internet. Because it's freeware and we can. Yep, not just freeware, it's open source freeware. We've had a few games working. We've managed to get quite a bit of success with Double Dragon, which has been going really rather nicely indeed. Um, set audio was working but we haven't got a set of speakers hooked up so there's, you won't really hear anything but yes audio is in fact working. Yeah. Yeah. Now normally at this point we'd be able to use this little yellow button up here which in simulates inserting the coin however as this isn't working um, that does nothing. Instead, we have to use the keyboard at the moment to demonstrate emulation, just for the sake of showing what could be done. So, imagine, if you will, when I press buttons on this keyboard, that it's this stuff that I'm actually pressing. So, games, as you can see by this bit here, are running at full speed. I don't know if you've ever seen Double Dragon before, guys, but I can tell you it's a fun one. And this is exactly what it was like. In fact, actually, this runs better than the PC I used to have it on. Yeah, this actually runs really rather nicely indeed. I pause for a sec. Uh, we set up these keys to work rather nicely. We've got the joystick just simulating arrow keys. Five representing uh, this yellow button here representing five, which is coin input. This little man button here being player one start, which is the one key. Uh, control, alt, spacebar, and then the other buttons four to six. So these would be punch, jump, kick, or punch, kick, jump or um, whatever game well, and so because we managed to get this menu system, this thing here going rather nicely, we added these two buttons here which is escape which allows you to exit the game you're playing and play pause so that if someone's if you're late for class for example you can pause it and hopefully maybe come back and finish it at lunch or whatever. As you can see we've only got half of the joysticks and buttons, we've got the cutouts for the buttons and joysticks here. So, this was all working rather nicely up until a point, and that point was when I went to put it in this cabinet to make this video, and the second it all got in the cabinet, I wired the GPIO upside down, and now it's not working. Well, the joysticks and buttons aren't working. And that's not the only issues we've had. Um, a few months ago, when we were just first making this, um, we realised that key repeat wasn't working. So basically what that means is when you hold down a key on your keyboard, it keeps, it's, it acts like it's pe pressing the key over and over again. So instead of having to do this to go down the list, you can just hold it down and away you fly down the list. We realised that these joysticks and buttons weren't doing that and that was really worrying to us because that would mean that in a game where you'd need to move around with the joystick you'd have to you would, Yeah, you'd have to tap it like that which is no fun at all and defeats the purpose of having such a beautiful joystick So I contacted the developer called Michael Moller a um, guy who lives in South Africa never met the guy in my life just contacted him and we started a chain of emails going he would create a new version of his code upload it to github I would download the code run it on my pie and see if it was working and after a while all hopes seemed lost we were looking at workarounds nothing was working and then eventually we found a bit of code that 
enabled key repeating with U input, U input being the virtual keyboard device that Linux uses to allow programs to simulate keyboard input, which you could have for a variety of uses, like a program that runs other programs or a web browser that automatically fills in passwords or whatever. But anyway, for whatever purpose you have it running, it would be there and it doesn't enable key repeating by default. Well, once that was enabled, we got joysticks working, we got button working, so we could have auto fire for games that had auto fire. So instead of having to button mash the button one key, which is this one here, to fire repeatedly, you could hold it down, or you could button mash. I mean, either one. That's entirely up to you. But Future plans, I'd say, are get the back. Yeah, we've got to get an entire back panel fitted, which. It's going to be interesting because the screen we've currently got sticks out a bit, so we're going to have to cut... Just an extension. Yeah, or either that or actually cut out a slot where the monitor sticks out. Or just cut it. Or, yeah, do something with a hacksaw. We'll work something out. Uh, I've got to spray paint this again in my workshop class a couple more times because this was just the first undercoat and you can see it's very, very inconsistent. It looks a little rubbish when you look at it in the light. And the where it's where the spray paint has interacted with the glue, it's created very shiny points that look quite nice, but where it's just going on the straight MDF, it looks rather rubbish. But hopefully we'll get a lovely nice black gloss going going on it and like the board itself. Yeah, this bit I spray painted quite a few times earlier. This is the first bit I actually got going because it was, I, feel, I saw it as the most important bit. And yep, that was looking rather nice. So we fitted it all together and I gave it its first coat of spray paint yesterday afternoon. So aside from the actual cabinet itself, this thing, the only other plan really is to get Fit. this fixed. I've ordered the components, half of which are from America, half are from JCAR, so they'll be arriving over the next uh, month or so. Um, and I would dearly like to also fit a power board inside of the arcade cabinet itself so that we can power the Pi and the monitor without anything else. This was one of the first circuit boards I've actually built. I haven't done a whole lot of them. So reading the schematics for the first time for it was quite challenging because it, was, it, it wasn't simple like the really basic ones we look at in science class. It was quite a bit more complicated. Uh, resistors and all the other bits and pieces were labelled differently. So I learnt on the fly how to read those. Um, by doing that we then managed to design this little circuit board here and in the process of designing, I discovered that I had inadvertently read the diagram wrong and had left out a couple of resistors and a capacitor and a connection as well. But that wasn't entirely my fault. The diagram that I was reading was a bit dodgy. It could have been done better. And I contacted the guy that makes the software that interfaces with this circuit board and we worked together to create a new circuit diagram that is far easier for someone who's new to this world to read. Um, the way it works essentially is it gets power input from here and ground there and we've got the I2C interface here and here. Um, then this bank of pins up here is the actual button connections so it's a way, the way I'd simulate a button press is we'd close a connection by starting one here at, I believe that's A7, and then closing it along this ground pin, these ground pins here, and it doesn't really matter which one because they all go to the same ground. So that will simulate a button press, and if I was to splice that wire and then spark them together like so, then it would simulate pressing the buttons, which is what these little micro switches, switches do. All I do is simply close a connection whenever that is pressed. You might hear the little click. So yeah, that's basically it. I'm hoping to remake this better. As you can see, we've got wires going across here. It's all horrible. So yeah, that's it.